and uh, the bus is terminated with this 120 ohm resistors also so that is like uh, why uh, it's like uh, how the data is transmitted to the can bus after that we have can characteristics uh, so i'm um, basically uh, with the help of this differential voltage only uh, we will be determining how zero and one are transmitted to the can bus basically what zero is determining here a dominant bit and one will be recessive bit uh, so uh, this figure as you see it is a voltage graph uh, that show the voltage level of can low and can high so uh, basically in a logic one as i told it is a recessive and logic zero it is a, a dominant so when can high line and can low line and applied with some voltage called 2.5 volt so if can high and can low is at 2.5 volt uh, then the actual voltage will be zero volt and the can low line is pulled down can low line is pulled down this one so uh, to 1.5 volt and then the bus actual differential voltage will be 2 volt so it is treated as dominant bit and uh, logic zero also you can say and if the bus is reached to dominant or logic zero then it is impossible to move the recessive state so mainly uh, you can say the can characteristics is like logic one we will call it as recessive state and to transmit uh, one on the can bus both can high and can low should be applied with 2.5 volt and if you want uh, the zero that will be dominant state uh, so if you transmit zero on can bus can high should be applied at 3.5 this is can high so it should be applied to 3.5 and can low should be applied at 1.5 so in this case it will be going to zero dominant zero and the ideal state of the bus uh, like ideal state is only recessive that is one so if the no node any node for example if it reaches to dominant state it cannot move back to the recessive state by another node it will be remain at dominant state so this was the basic of can uh, you both uh, understood uh, until what I told. Yeah, all is fine. Yeah. Okay. Some background on this. So yeah. So anyways, I will be sharing these uh, uh, also to you. So if you have any doubts, let's say for example, if you read today and if you have any doubts, so after that, uh, how uh, what is like uh, how the data is transmitted? Like what is the can frame actually? So this is the bus ideal state. So I told you right, uh, bus ideal state it will be always recessive. So it's always one here bus idle state. So after that we have SOF something here. So SOF is basically the start of the frame. Uh, SOF, start, uh, SOF it itself stands for start of frame which indicate that the new frame is entered in the network and it is of one bit. It is a one bit data and uh, it's like it will tell us like new frame is entering in the network. After that we have identifier so uh, we have a standard data format defined under a can specification so basically it will be like 11 bit message uh, 11 bit message identifier it will be like uh, this message sets the priority of the data frame so it will tell us then we have some rtr bit rtr stands for remote transmission request which defines the frame type whether it is a data frame or remote frame so it is also one bit so it will be like if the RTR is one, it will be data frame. It is zero. If it, it is, will be remote frame. It's like that. After that, we have control field. Uh, this is actually a control field. Uh, so in uh, it's like first it will be IDE. So IDE is a use. Uh, it's a like uh, uh, this bit in a control field. It uh, ID basically it's a identifier extension. So if the dominant bit defines the 11 bit identifier, whereas recessive IDD bit will uh, determine like 25 bit extended identifier. So here we have identifier what we have discussed. So if this IDE bit, let's say for example, if this IDE bit is dominant, that means zero, then we have this 11 bit identifier. If uh, this IDE bit is one that is recessive, then we have 29 bit identifier. After that, we have DLC. Uh, DLC stand for data data length code uh, which will define like how much data so it will be of four byte then we have data fields so data field can contain the data up to eight bytes as can is supported only eight bytes of data after that we will be moving to can FD, uh, more thing and after that we have some CRC sequence here CRC field uh, so basically the CRC field is like uh, the uh, cyclic check redundancy we will call it as and it will be of 15 bit 
uh, which is used to detect the uh, corruption uh, if it occurs during the transmission time let's say for example the sender will send the data uh, the compute the crc before sending the data so if i am sending some data i will compute some calculations will be there so i will compute that crc before sending the frame and the receiver will also compute on his side uh, for and he will also calculate some crc and then it will compare so what i have calculated and what he have calculated if it is same or not if it will not match then the receiver will generate the error in this case so it is like that this crc field and after that we have some acknowledgement field so acknowledgement field it's like the receiver's acknowledgement so in other protocols if you see a separate packet for acknowledgement is sent after uh, receiving all the packets of data but in this can protocol uh, we have no separate packet uh, for acknowledgement it's like uh, here only we will get to know and after that we will have end of frame uh, so end of frame it's like it will contain some seven consecutive recessive bits so uh, let's say i am sending some data and i uh, when the receiver got the data and it has seven consecutive recessive bits like once then it will got to know like data is ended after we have this data link layer uh, what we have discussed previously physical layer now it's data link layer now i will uh, get you into detail like what is actually the data link layer so i want you to explain how the bit rate is influenced when the uh, can bus length rises up let's say if you see in this graph if the bus length is less data rate will be increased so it's like that so the more it will be the can bus length the less will be the allowed bit rate for the communication we have so bit rate if you see if we are increasing the bus length the bit rate is decreasing uh, so why this is so the it is because uh, as we all know we are dealing with some electronic based communication system so there can be many phenomena that disturbs the communication so for example if you know reflection phenomenon uh, it's and electronic interface uh, with other electronic signals around the physical environment which where the harness is placed so the range of the can length in which the bit rate has a uh, value of 100 kbps is fine for the vehicle actually uh, for our vehicles it is like 100 kb kbps it's fine maximum so uh, we can have less than 40 meter of uh, uh, length of the uh, this can bus is fine but what it will be if the industrial applications we are using so we, there anyways uh, we require more wiring harness less uh, more than maybe 1 kilometer so let's have a look into data link layer so uh, maybe uh, i will tell you how the uh, signal and messages are handled so uh, basically a message is made up of many signals if you go through the cano also we have a message in which many signals will be there so for sure the amount of signal in the message is can be just one signal one signal can be there and many signals can be there and the signals are contained the data field of the main frame in the signals we have uh, so inside the payload so each signals if you see here i have written some attributes here so each signal is defined with the following attributes signal name will be there length in the bit of course it will be there byte order whether it's a little engine it's a big engine it will be there and uh, is scaling factor offset will be there what with the minimum value of the signal what is the maximum value of the signal and uh, each message will be defined uh, through some id and a list of signals will compose the message uh, I, as i told you so it is convenient to place as many possible inside a can frame and in order to make it more efficient the communication has to save the bandwidth for all the other messages also you need to man because it's not only one message or one signal it's about many messages and many signals so you have to save the bandwidth for other messages as well so i think you understand that and that each message is defined through a fixed id and that id is important for the ecu in the addressing phase only so so if you see uh, the uh, we will go through the following features basically now the can protocol and uh, no one no more than one node can transmit it concurrently on the bus system basically it's like uh, we cannot send more than one messages at a time otherwise 
two can frames can overlap and it will take a wrong complete wrong frame so that's why and in that case the crc will fail for sure and uh, the receiving node discard the correspondent message so that's why it is written each node works as a receiver and transmitter concurrently uh, so uh, next part it will be like all the nodes on the bus system read the current messages what we are sending from the identifier and it will decide like whether the message is relevant for them or not by means of mechanism that we will learn during actually this session uh, we will make some practical example also uh, during understand the mechanism uh, so we will see here uh, if you see here uh, the mask filter what i have wrote here so mask filter so in this message frame the address of the node must be read uh, the message is not present but there is a general identifier with all these uh, so if you see here we have uh, so yeah sorry uh, in this if you see uh, we have one mask we have predefined mask and a predefined filter here uh, so each uh, node uh, will be uh, will have some mask value and a filter value so let's say for example if we have a certain ecu uh, that have a can frames whose last two bytes are corresponding identifiers uh, whatever can be the value so we have these four ids basically uh, so if you see hmm, uh, so uh, on can uh, can we will be noticed that the four messages with uh, id one two three and four are there so it must be triggered the algorithm to verify whether all these four messages are relevant to it or not so uh, first it will uh, trigger that algorithm and after that these four messages can be uh, sent four different times to the can nodes so this is also important that's not important for the algorithm actually so the initial uh, what we will think is like uh, was that focus on node is interested only message for example uh, if uh, the node is interested only for these three id1 id2 and id3 and for example these id you can take it as some speed of the wheels uh, one will be a uh, radio station and another is the navigation position so let's suppose uh, uh, we have current focus node is hmi so hmi so it must show all these information to the driver on the cluster screen but the fourth id we don't care uh, for example it is the position of the passenger window so we don't care about that passenger of the window but we are caring about these speed of wheels radio station and the navigation position hmi is not interested for the fourth position so id4 will automatically get discarded but we must apply the mask filter uh, we have some algorithm like mask filter algorithm so all th four will be going through that mask filter algorithm and uh, we will be going through it the focus node is its controller Ma we have some mask id and filter is already defined pre built so uh, what it will do it will do some uh, binary multiplication you know right one zero is zero zero one zero 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 so i hope you know that the binary multiplication between each side and node mask is down and if the result matches with the filter value so what we will do is we will uh, multiply this mask value with all these ids and if it is same with the filter value then it will take that otherwise that id is classified as non-relevant and corresponding can message frame is discarded so it will work like that and uh, it will be discarded uh, so it's basically it will be like if you are doing uh, one one it will give you one and uh, after that if you are doing one zero it's a binary multiplication it will give you zero if you are doing zero zero it will give you zero and uh, if you are doing zero one it will again give you zero so if any one time also zero will come uh, we will get the zero here so if you multiply this mask filter so if you uh, see here mask filter and if you do the binary application uh, binary multiplication you will get to know this fourth one it uh, if you see uh, we have last third bit one here and one one will be one so it will not matches with the filter we have all zeros here so automatically what it will do it will take all these three and discard the fourth one uh, so it is like that uh, but uh, anyways uh, now you can see that the filter value is not so uh, this message will be discarded and uh, after that uh, we will uh, take these three at the hmi and it is done so this is the 
third case and uh, after that uh, we have something called uh, in can actually basically we have some csmacd 